Are we going to keep staring at each other? Or are you going to invite me in? It's just that I wasn't expecting anybody. If you don't mind my asking, what can I do for you? You need money. I need your investigative skills. I mean, I no longer do detective work. But do come in if you want to. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Blake. Sophia Blake. Mr. McPherson, I need you to investigate a case that is dear to my heart. Just name your price. I haven't investigated in a long time, miss. I really need your investigative skills. I will pay all your expenses. I don't investigate anymore, Miss Blake. But you mentioned something about an interesting sum. I don't have any orders at present. Maybe I could make some room for your case. You relieve me, Mr. McPherson. This case is strange. It's a crime. A double murder. I don't want to seem overly interested, but why don't we settle my fees before we go any further? This case may take you several days. I'll give you 500 straight away and 500 per day of successful investigation. Could you give me any more details about the case? At the moment, it all seems rather nebulous. You probably haven't heard about the Orfe case, Mr. McPherson. The newspapers have kept it quiet. A couple of American tourists were brutally murdered. They were my sister and her husband. I want to know the circumstances surrounding their death. Your sister and her husband, they were both American. What exactly were they doing in Paris? I was supposed to meet them in Paris. You know, Mr. McPherson, visiting Europe was my sister Ruby's childhood dream. With Mr. White, her wish came true. They were so very much in love. How did they die? Are you sure they were murdered? It may just have been a terrible accident. The Whites were found decapitated in their hotel room, Mr. McPherson. These murders were committed in Paris. Do you know whereabouts in Paris? A hotel in a chic part of Paris in the 8th district. The Hotel Orphée. They arrived there about a week ago. They were found dead in their hotel bedroom. Are the police handling the case? If they are, it may well complicate things. Do you know the name of the inspector in charge of the investigation? The detective in charge of the investigation is named Le Brun. You know, the police are the same in every country, Mr. McPherson. Whether you're in New York or in Paris, you mustn't be in a hurry. Le Brun is no exception. I don't get it. I've never worked for you before, not here nor in New York, yet you come to me and ask me to find your sister's murderer. Why me, Miss Blake? Your reputation, Mr. McPherson. I find your nickname Spooky to be charming. I have friends who know people at the Pinkerton Agency in New York. The suspicion surrounding you is totally unfounded, naturally. You are the man I need for this investigation. Discreet, capable of seeing beyond appearances. To be honest, I'm not sure I should take the case. Firstly, because where there's a murder, there's a murderer. Inspector Lebrun is in a better position to arrest murderers than I am. Mr. McPherson, I have no faith in the police. The 8th District Police Station, Lebrun especially, is trying to hush up the affair. All they care about is keeping their reputation as a chic area. Your offer is very reasonable. I accept. I owe you a lot, Mr. McPherson. Much more than the money I'm paying you. You'd like me to begin right away. I think I have all the information I need to begin. You're sure you haven't forgotten anything? The police didn't find any items of value in the room. Yet my sister and her husband traveled very comfortably, in luxury and with old family heirlooms. It was a passion they both shared. It is risky traveling with large sums of money. It would be a shame if they'd been killed for that reason. How valuable were these family heirlooms? An old relic of no value. My sister was very fond of it. Of no value whatsoever. 
I hope to have results quickly. I'll be in touch with you when I've made some progress in my investigation. Goodbye, Miss Blake. I ask only one thing of you. Be discreet. The police must not suspect you were involved. If you'd like to meet me... What number can I dial for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the post office, please? I'd like to send a telegram. Right away, sir. Post a telegraph, go ahead, please. I'd like to send a telegram to New York, please. The addressee is one J. Wells of Pinkerton's National Detective Agency, number 57 Broadway. The message reads, Need information on woman named Sophia Blake. Stop. I've made a note of it. It will leave this morning. Done. These suitcases are heavy. And do not forget, young man, the elevator is still out of order. Oh, brother! Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? Gus McPherson. I'm a detective. A private investigator. I'm working on an investigation. A private investigation. The death of the Whites. Sorry, sir. I'm afraid I cannot help you. I thought you were the manager of this establishment. I'm sorry if I made a mistake. You are speaking to him. I am the manager, but I have no wish to answer your questions, sir. You refuse to answer my questions? Is that it? Well then, I refuse to answer yours. I'll just stay here and wait. Uh, you cannot wait. Not here. Who would you be waiting for anyway? One of your customers will come by in the end. One of them must have seen something. Maybe they can give me some information on the Whites. Who knows? There were no witnesses to the deaths. Besides which, the police have forbidden us to discuss what happened. You should contact them directly. The police? No, this is too complicated for the police. They'll just ask a bunch of questions and never get any answers. Granted, the police's line of questioning is hard to fathom, but still, they do represent the law. If you want any more information, contact the police directly. I'm afraid that I can do no more for you. What can I get you, sir? My name is McPherson. I'm a private detective. You really are a private eye, just like in the movies. You've even got the hat, and you're American too. Oh, Private Dick. Yeah, a real detective investigating a real murder, the one at the Orfe. Golly, I wish I was a detective. So you're investigating the Hotel Orfe murder? Come on, you must know something. Ask away if you must, but I assure you, I've seen nothing out of the ordinary. Is it money that you're after? Sir, please, I'm an honest man. Fine, 
I'll buy you a bottle of red wine then. I understand. That'll be five francs. So. Did you have any unusual customers that evening? You must be joking, my friend. Strange customers are all in a day's work for a waiter. That evening was no exception. Like the man who spent the evening alone at a table over there, besides the window. He left empty-handed. Been stood up, I imagine. Be a good guy. Tell me in detail what you saw that night. I don't know any more than that. I know that Petit, the hotel Orphée receptionist, was chewing the fat with Inspector Lebrun. He seemed to know quite a lot about the white case. Thank you. You're welcome. Quite sure, Mr. Beauvais, that you have not seen him? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Go on, Mrs. Elwa, go home. We will take care of this, I promise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beauvais, you're so kind. The next time I'm at Cézanne, I'll bring you back a nice bottle of red wine. That's a promise. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Ah, a little bottle of red. Come on, next. Can I help you? My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a private eye, a private detective. I wanted to ask you if you'd be willing to answer a few questions and help me in my investigation on the Orfe murders. Just a helping hand so I can launch my investigation in the right direction. That way we will not get our lines crossed. I don't want to impede your work in any way. Forget it. Mm. It is baking in here, isn't it? You would not happen to have anything to drink, would you? Just one for the road? I do happen to have a little something for you. An amazing bottle of red wine. You cannot say no to that, officer. Don't you feel a little thirsty? I've read the police report, but I'm sure you can tell me a little more. What are your impressions on the White case? This case is pretty messy. A foul murder, unclear motive. If Inspector Lebrun needs a hand, he will ask me. For the time being, he is managing on his own like a big boy. That is all I know. Of course, if Inspector Lebrun is surrounded by guardian angels like you, he can't be making much headway with his investigations. If he's not making headway in his investigation, it's his own fault. 
Le brun is bending over backwards, trying to find the mysterious visitor the Whites had that evening, just before the murder. He's not even cross-checking the statements. When I read the file, I noticed the name of a certain doctor, Frank Kaufner. What can you tell me about him? Dr. Kaufner is our expert. Forensic scientist and, above all, psychiatrist. The sort of guy who prefers the company of madmen and corpses to the likes of you and me. You don't seem to be overly fond of Dr. Kaufner. Is there any particular reason for that? The chief of police himself imposed Dr. Kofner on us. It's not going to help matters any. Am I right in thinking Inspector Lebrun is in charge of the investigation on the White case? Would it be possible to meet with him? That way we can compare our information. He is not seeing anybody. Just make a statement. Goodbye. Yeah, right. Goodbye. Dr. Kaufner's office, please. It's over there, right at the end of the hall. Make sure you don't get lost. Come in. Dr. Frank Kaufner? Uh, what can I do for you, sir? I'm Gustav McPherson. I've come here to ask you a few questions about the White case. Tell me what you want to hear. So, you are investigating the incident at the Hotel Hofe? I'm a private eye. A private detective? Then someone is showing an interest in the White's murder. A person who wishes to remain anonymous is paying me to investigate. We all have a reputation to protect. Appearances can sometimes be deceptive, Dr. Kaufner. That's why I would like to clarify this situation by gathering as much information as possible. I am at your disposal, Mr. McPherson. How can I help you? What can you tell me about the scene of the crime? The police have released very few details. Are these the first crimes of this nature committed in Paris? No crime has ever been committed with such passion and hatred, Mr. McPherson. And you think the motive for the murder was theft? That is what the police say. But does the official version reflect Inspector Lebrun's true opinion? This murder could be the first in a long series of crimes. What could be the motive of such a crime? The man who committed this murder, and I stress the fact that he is a man, is probably quite overwhelmed at the present time. This crime was committed under the influence of a sudden impulse, without premeditation. His act is now haunting him. He is not himself. Is this the evidence found at the scene of the murder that will enable you to draw your conclusions? Sequential repetition of habits. The cure for hysterical behavior is by elimination of the source of anguish. I am just a psychoanalyst, Mr. McPherson. It is the job of the police to draw conclusions, not mine. What do you make of the traces of purple powder found on the bedroom floor? Very little. Probably a drug used by the murderer to ease the pain of his act. What do you make of the coin found in the victim's mouths? Do you know, Mr. McPherson, that in antiquity, superstition had it that we should pay Sharon, the boatman of Hades, by placing a coin in the mouth of the dead. These ancient myths are buried deep in our unconscious and resurface when we are overcome by hysteria. Fascinating, isn't it? All that is symbolic, Mr. McPherson. 
The murderer himself probably doesn't even know. Like all symbols, it is up to us to interpret them. You are implying that the murderer is a victim too, Dr. Kaufner. We are all victims of the secrets of our soul, Mr. McPherson. This criminal is no exception. We are all victims of our past. And do you have a suspect, Mr. McPherson? If I had a suspect, I would not be here, Dr. Kaufner. It has been a most pleasant conversation, but unfortunately, I cannot afford you more time, Mr. McPherson. I hope I have satisfied your curiosity. front desk clerk will not like to see me going upstairs alone. I must find a ruse or persuade him to come up with me. You again! Sir, I have nothing more to say to you. And me who found the studio tiny. Hoping that his break did not. Here we go again. And make sure you do not drop it, young man. Don't worry about it, Mr. Petit. Oh. This is really heavy. Talk about starting a new job on the wrong foot. Ow! Ow! Just one more step. Ooh. And there we go. Whew. It's a good thing I didn't have the Atlantic to cross. Of course the door is locked, and the front desk clerk is hardly likely to open it for me. I must find a way to get in. You, the detective. You want to know? Come on in, and you shall. Welcome to my home, Inquisitor. Who told you I was a detective, madam? I am a seer. I simply see things others do not. I can feel the suffering radiating from you. Have you been the victim of visions, madam? Rather like me? Visions of murder? The White's murder. Young man, your instinct spoke to you. You are an artist, are you not? I'm also an artist. Perhaps you'd like to buy one of my paintings. Take this. They say Napoleon brought it back from his Egyptian campaign. It represents Thought, the Egyptian god of arcane knowledge. The Ibis of the Nile. It will help you on your quest. I shall be there to help you find the right path. I will remember what you said. Who knows? One day I may even need your clairvoyance. Well, should you have need of guidance, do not hesitate. Come back and see me. Sir? 
police have a suspect. I saw the inspector's report. What do you know about the man who spent the entire evening by the window? That is certainly true. He was here on the night of the murder. Could you give me a description of this mysterious character? You could draw him? That's really neat. I'll give you a description right now. He was tall, very tall, heavy, black moustache, square-faced, and dreadful eyes, threatening even, a tough guy. Until what time did the man stay? Now let's see if I can remember. He arrived at around 8 p.m., took a seat by the window, and dashed off just before the storm broke at around 11 p.m. And he stayed there alone for the whole evening. Now let me think. I saw him chatting for a while with Malay. Who is this Malay? Théo Malay. Works at the Orphée. He's a lout. Why is he a lowlife? He likes to bet. And when you do, you have to pay your gambling debts. It's a vicious circle. Malay is a bona fide con man. And do you know where I might find this Malay? Malay hangs out at the Alambique, a bistro in the 14th district. That is where he gambles away his wages. Did you notice whether Malay gave any money to this man? Uh, no, no, no. It's the man who gave the money to Malay. I remember, it was cash. Did you see this man with the whites? I have never seen the whites, under any circumstances. There's no way I would have noticed them with that man. The whites never came to the cafe? <laughs> I wouldn't know for sure. A pair of Americans outside the tourist season are pretty conspicuous. But if you want to be sure, check at the Orphe's reception desk. Maybe they would know. Thank you. You're welcome. I've not seen you in ages. Berenice, what a surprise. Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you know a certain Teo Malay? Uh, no, but surely the owner does. You're lucky he's in right now. Your no one knows everyone you know. You're as charming as ever. Thank you, Berenice. Ah, uh, call me baby like everybody else. Right, I've got to run too, cutie. You know, work. See you soon, okay? Yes, uh, anyway, you know my address. Come up and see me sometime. Ciao. Ciao! Come on, let's see that hot hand of yours. Queen and her three sisters. Oh no, are you doing it on purpose or what? Three of a kind. You beat my three aces. Right, I've had it. I'm off. Ah, uh, Hulot, you're not going now, are you? Not when I was about to relieve you of your car. Don't start, Malay. Do not think that you can get away with things just because you have settled your bar tab. Why, it is McPherson. Hey, McPherson, come over here! McPherson? Who is that? Another American in Paris, who is broke. Let me introduce you. McPherson, let me introduce Théo Mallet. Hi. Right, I will leave you two. I have work to do. Hi. I may be a friend of Hulot, but I'm also a private detective in my spare time. Oh, goody. A private eye all to myself. And who might you be working for? I'm not here to cause you any trouble, Mallet. I just want some information about someone I think you might know. Really? This is a nice surprise. A private eye who needs me. What do you want to know? 
few days ago, something happened at the Orfe. Something truly awful. As you probably know, an American couple was found dead there. Murdered. I'm reliably informed you were on duty that night. You even had a drink in the cafe next door, the Nantes, with someone suspicious. Maybe even the murderer himself. Does that mean anything to you? Find someone else. Frankly, I have nothing to say. Q, you deny having met any man with a mustache at the Nantes Cafe on the night of the murder. Yet you were seen there. Did I hear right? You are calling me a liar? Well, the liar bids you farewell. Good day to you, sir. I have something to show you. Do you recognize this man? That's all very well, but how am I going to find that man now? He'll never come back to the Alambic. I knew the Yanks were strange, but to talk to yourself out loud and in French to boot? Some are stranger than others. See you soon. got some information on the Orfe murders. Exceptional information. Fresh info? You are better informed than us, are you? If you have no objection, I would rather talk about this with Inspector Lebrun alone. If you want to speak to him, you have to confide in me first, Sonny. I have some fabulous new information on the Orfe case. A portrait of the killer. Here, look. My God, I do not believe it. Let me warn Inspector Lebrun immediately. Do you recognize him? Wait, do you know who he is? You. Eloin? Jacques Eloin? It's impossible. Eloin. The name rings a bell. If only I could see that vision again. Control that vision. If only... The inspector would like to see you immediately. Come in, come in, dear sir, come in. A private eye, huh? <laughs> what do you want from us? I have no time to waste. I don't have time to waste either, inspector. I've got some news on the white case. I'm listening, McPherson. Go on, fire away. I... I have a portrait of a suspect. A suspect who may very well be the guilty party. Where is this uh, portrait from, McPherson? In fact, it is your mysterious visitor. He was seen by witnesses. I drew this portrait from their descriptions. And where did you find the witnesses, McPherson? Taking statements is part of my work as a detective. Loosening tongues, looking in the right places, 
talking to the right people. Interesting. Our work is very similar. There is just one problem, huh? You are interfering with our investigation, McPherson. I am trying to help you, Inspector. Okay, let's say I agree to work with you. What do you want to know? The portrait. You say you know who it looks like. That means he's a known criminal. He has a record. Who is it? Jacques Elouin. He's a private eye, an ex-cop. He lives in the 11th district. And he is in big trouble. The white case. Why don't you give me more information? The public could help you. And you could use this portrait to officially issue a description of a wanted person. You are very naive, Mr. McPherson. This man is incredibly dangerous. Our specialist, uh, Dr. Koffner, has informed us that the ritualistic nature of this murder could provoke severe psychosis in the mind of the public. Like in London at the turn of the century. He's killed again? Who's dead? Théo Mallet, the former doorman at the Orphée. Do you know him, Mr. McPherson? I... I talked to him last night. It was he, uh, Mallet. Malay fled as I was showing him the portrait of the suspect. What you are telling me only serves to prove his guilt. Now you have what you want. Make yourself scarce. I need to think. Goodbye, McPherson. Locked, obviously. What else did I expect? Looks like there's nobody in there. I need to find a way to take a look around. friend who has your son's best interests at heart, madame. Liar! I do not believe you. Jacques is not a criminal. Get out! He's not here! Scram! Madame, Eloin is wanted by the police. For murder. Any idea where he may be hiding? Hiding? I swear he's not here. Why would he hide? Uh, I've not seen him uh, for several days. I have no idea where he is. You're lying, Madame Eloine. Tell me where I can find your son. I mean him no harm. On the contrary, I need to talk to him. You do not want to harm him. Can... can I trust you? Please understand, Eloine has not done anything. He's afraid, that's all. He's not hiding, but he needs help. My son is up there. Follow me. Upstairs, just go on up. Right. Jacques Eloin, I'm arresting you for the murder of Regis and Ruby White. I'm innocent. I may have led the murderer to the Eatons, but I did not kill them. The Eatons? What are you talking about? It's a long story, but this is what happened. 
It was after a rather tiresome case. The story of adultery that ended badly. The husband had hired me because his wife had supposedly run off with the money. She told quite another story, of course. I will spare you the details. I came home shattered. During my absence, a certain De Alpin had come by about some employees who had swindled him. I knew that De Alpin was a banker and that there would be plenty of money in it, but I was dead on my feet. So I told my mother to call him back and tell him to get lost. That's when she showed me the check. So, off I went again. in the mud all day. And who scrubs? Old Muggins here. And where do you think you're going, eh? You gonna walk over me to get in here? Some people have work to do. Who are you? Can't you see I'm not here? If it's for the poor I gave at the office. Are you done, Cinderella? You're blocking my way. What is it now? Some of us have work to do. And nobody goes up the stairs until I have finished. Who are you coming to see anyway? Lovely day, isn't it? Say, can you give me the Eaton's room number? The Eaton's? What do you want from the Eaton's? Are you a friend of theirs? You don't look the sort they would associate with. Paul and I were in the same regiment during the Great War. We bonded and I was in love with his sister Gracie. So when I heard they were coming to Paris, I just had to surprise them. It is certainly going to be a surprise, except you're the one who's going to be on the receiving end. As I understand it, you and your sister, ha, <laughs> that's a laugh. His sister, the tramp. She's not his sister, she's his dame. That Mr. Paul really conned you. In any case, ha, <laughs> ha. Your lovebirds have flown the nest. Wait, you mean Paul and his sister are not in fact brother and sister? I know how to recognize lovebirds, thank you. Yours were more like two vultures about to devour each other, always tearing each other's hair out. And she was the one who ruled the roost. She was hardly ever around. That Paul used to get in a right state when he was hanging out with the Montparnasse lot. Montparnasse. You mean, people who live in the Montparnasse district, the, the artist's quarter? Paul hung out with artists there. Anywhere in particular? The Alembic gang? That's where all the layabouts met. Birds of a feather stick together, as they say. These bloody rascals really want to drive me up the wall. I have a Florida scrub. So you with the mustache, clear off or I'll chuck you out on your ear. I think there's a spot there. Careful. Otherwise, you might as well start all over again. Little rascals, wait till I catch you! Hey! Not my flowers, my beautiful flowers! Wait! They're going to see what I'm made of. Strange. Yeah. Oh dear. What a mess. Mrs. Evelyn, you've got some cleaning to do.
Good evening, sir. Are you expected? My name is Edouard. I've come to see the master of the house. Would you introduce me, please? Sorry, sir. My master cannot see you. Right. Are you in charge here? Do you mind, as a cure for melody, if I ask you one or two questions? Is this the lodge of the Brotherhood of the Supreme Order of the Rosy Cross? Sorry, sir. I cannot answer your questions. As a doorman, you're in a position to know all the members of the club. K and GDA are both members, are they not? All information about our members is confidential, sir. I am sorry. I apologize. Your honorable members are naturally not under any suspicion. In fact, I'm seeking information about a young woman, Grace Eaton. Or maybe you've seen her brother, Paul Eaton. A big, strong fellow. They've been here. Sir is insistent. It would, however, be preferable if you withdrew. Come on, buddy. I'm not asking for much, just for you to think back a little. Grégoire de Alpin is a member of your little family, is he not? Our brotherhood is private, sir. You must leave the premises, otherwise I shall be forced to call the authorities. You were not announced, sir. I wasn't expecting you. How can I help you? Hello, Doctor. Jacques Eloin, private detective. Sorry, I am out of business cards. You'll have to take my word for it. That we will both be in the same boat. A private eye. I am sure you are well aware I am not at liberty to discuss one of my patients. Doctor-patient confidentiality. Actually, I'm not interested in your patience, Doctor. On the other hand, you could be of great assistance. Do you want a consultation, Mr. Elouin? I found your business card at the home of... Um, of someone who's not so innocent. I have no control over who has one of my calling cards, Mr. Elouin. The proof... You yourself have one. And yet, I never gave it to you. You do not happen to have a patient by the name of Gracie Eaton, Dr. Kofner? Gracie Eaton? Of course, Mr. Elwin. What do you want to know about Gracie Eaton? Gracie Eaton is a little crazy, isn't she? You do treat the mentally ill, don't you? <laughs> Not all of my patients are ready for a straitjacket, Mr. Elwin. On the contrary, I care for all those with tormented souls. It's called therapy. One could classify Miss Eaton in this category. Gracie Eaton has a brother. Paul Eaton, doesn't she? What do you know about him? Paul Eaton. I suspect he engineered the whole thing. He's the one who brought Gracie to my office when she had her first attack. Thereafter, he remained in the background. According to what they say, you're not such strangers. Excellent work, Mr. Elwin. You have discovered the link between myself, Gracie Eaton, and your employer, Grégoire de Alpin. And you have done so, as he requested, by keeping his identity secret. Have you known my client Grégoire de Alpin for long? Mr. de Alpin is an intimate friend. We are very close. You know why I've been hired? And I won't hide the fact that I do not have any hard facts on the theft. Is there anything you can tell me? You know enough to complete your investigation, Mr. Elouin. Listen, old chap. If you want to know where the Eatons are hiding, you have come to the wrong place. Yes, I introduced Gracie Eaton to the companions. Yes, she knew the Alpin. But as to how intimate they were, that is their business. 
All I can tell you is that if I knew where she and her brother were, you would not be here. So, do the job you are being paid to do, Mr. Elwa. Find the thieves and let us get on with the rest. We each have our own role, do we not? If it's not my buddy, Elwa, how is business going, Snoop? So, Mimil, how's it going? Tell me, the police would not have anything on a certain Grégoire de Alpin, would they? The Alpin is one of the biggest sharks around. A filthy rich banker, an old slightly eccentric Parisian. Have you gotten on his bad side? Don't you worry. The Alpine's not on my back. He's in my back pocket. <laughs> Has he reported a theft or anything of the sort in the past few days? Preferably something that seems to be the cause of much frustration? Earth to Elwin! You are dreaming if you think the Alpine would come to me for a simple burglary case. He is tied with the big boss. If anything ever happened to him, it would stay between him, the chief of police, and the crook, who would probably stand a good chance of ending up in the Seine, keeping the fishies company. It's almost a privilege to investigate for him. Strange that De Alpin did not make use of his contacts to sort out his little problems. Edouin, I will keep in touch. We are pals, after all. <laughs> Give my regards to your mother. Does the name Eaton's mean anything to you? A woman and man. Brother and sister. Americans. Eaton. Eaton. Let me think. No. I have nothing under that name. Are they dangerous? Don't you worry about me, Emil. With that little greasy Eaton, it's in the bag. But I prefer to check out the company I wish to keep before involving myself. Get my drift? <laughs> Eloi, you must be the only bloke in Paris who uses police records to pick up girls. Listen, if I hear anything about a young single criminal, <laughs> I'll let you know. Goodbye, Emil. See you later. That's right. Let honest folk work. And the time he dressed up as an angel, and he... did not have a string on his bow. Berenice. Oh, sorry. Jacques Eloi. Perhaps you could help me. Why not? Would you like a drink? Come on, don't be silly. I'm a modern girl. Come, have a seat. You've never been here. I would remember your face. I'm curious to know what brings you here. Knight in shining armor left you alone in such a place. That's hardly why. I'm old enough to look after myself, but thanks for the thought. Today must be my lucky day. In my job, I usually deal with punks, not cute dolls like you. I'm a detective. You happen to know a certain Paul Eaton? The American? Paul Eaton? Yes, I know him. He's been filling our heads with his stories for the past month. He and the owner are mates. What about Paul? Does he come here often? You know, if he starts bugging you, it would give me more reasons to nail him. You know, Jacques, that Eaton smells like trouble. 
One day, he turns up from God knows where with his little British accent. After a few drink sessions with Hulot, the owner, he loses his accent. After that, he shows up here practically every day, more American than ever. Then wham! No more news. Well, that's a shame. I was really hoping to find him there. To be honest, I went to his place before coming to the Alambic and... Like magic, they disappeared. So, I thought you might be able to help me. We do not really know what Eaton is doing in Paris. In the beginning, he said he was with his sister, a student. After a few binges, his sister had become his wife, and they were both onto the scam of the century. Interesting story about Eaton. Is he onto something big? Did he give you any details? Mind you, with guys like him, you never know what to believe. I'm fond of you, Snoop. You know how to go about things. I'm going to help you. Paul Eaton was in Paris for a contract. A scam that would make him rich. His wife was his accomplice. Then he got the jitters. He's hiding now. Hulot, the owner, definitely knows more. You'll have to see him about that. Only thing is, he's not too fond of private Snoops. Charming. Living these. I can feel that, like me, you're dying to know where Paul Eaton and his wife are. What was Paul planning to do after his job? Any ideas? The owner, Hulot, knows a thing or two. Paul only spoke English and he never mentioned any names. He could not have known much. It's not because you drink like a fish that you know more. It was his other half who pulled the strings. The owner, Hulot. He's also your friend. Hmm. Would you be kind enough to introduce us? The owner's not here. He's just driven off. Actually, I think he had a rendezvous with Eaton. Damn it, this is too much. I'm always one step behind. This time, I'll catch them before they slip away again. It is simple, Jacques. The owner went dashing off. He mentioned a restaurant, getting back late. How would I know? A oh, restaurant. How fitting. I was planning on inviting you. But a restaurant in Paris... It's like looking for a needle in the haystack. Any idea which one? And why would I know? Eaton talked about going out to a chic restaurant with his wife. But he did not even know which one. It was Hulot who scribbled down the address before leaving. That's all you know, is it? In any case... Someone as charming as you is always beyond suspicion. Ciao, Snoop. Good luck. Look, a notepad. The first page seems to have been ripped out in a hurry. Hulot is implicated in this affair? But how? Who knows? He's a fence, is he not? I brought you a little snack. Thank you. I'll just put it there. We'll help ourselves. Okay, where was I? Oh, uh, yes, the restaurant. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Shell Alexander. Do you have a reservation? I'm here to see some friends. Two Americans, a couple. The Eatons. I hope I haven't missed them. I do not see any reservation under that name. Maybe they have reserved a table in another establishment. I'm sorry to insist, but I'm sure this couple knows your restaurant. A man and a woman. Americans. The woman has been here. Quite a look at. Goes by the name of Gracie Eaton. Mm, now that you mention it, I think she she came here. Huh, and she was with some guy or other. 
They even had a rather colorful exchange in English, and it was not all sweet nothings, I can tell you. But it's not the name you gave me. No, no, it was White. White, not Eaton. I'm a private detective, hired by Grégoire de Alpa. I have to find them, and quickly. I'm fed up of chasing after them. Any idea where they could be? Got an address. Sir, this is not my job to spy on people. It would seem to be yours, though. All that matters to me is that they enjoyed their meal and pay their bill. Actually, they put it on their account at the Hotel Orphée. A French gentleman joined them, and they chatted for a while before leaving together. I do not know where they went. I hope this is of some help to you, because you seem to be completely lost. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphe. How may I help you? Wait. I've come to see the whites. Which room might I find them in? We do not give out such information, sir. Not without the prior agreement of our clients. Come on. It's not as if I'm asking for the moon. I just want to know if the whites are guests at your hotel. I'm sorry, sir. I will not answer any questions regarding the Orphe's guests. Ha! <laughs> I had you going there for a minute. The whites really are guests at your hotel. Why? I never! I... I... I strongly advise you to leave this establishment before I call the authorities. Hey, and, um, while we're at it, any chance I can get their room number as well? That is enough. I refuse to talk to you any further. You're not the first guard dog I have encountered, but you're certainly the toughest. I'll let you think about it. Do not worry, though. I'll be back soon. It is better that way, sir. Okay, what do I do now? Now what? If you want any leads about the Whites, wait for me at the Nazi. I will give you some. This case is really beginning to get on my nerves. What can I get you, sir? Bottle, please. That will be five francs, sir. All right. Thanks, and good day. You're welcome, sir. Sit down. What do you want with the whites? You look like someone who might be able to slip me some info about the whites. We will see. How much will you pay? Don't worry, it's my client who pays. Ah, someone who gets things quickly. We're going to get along just fine. Now what do you want to know? The whites. Do you know who I'm talking about? Well, there are a couple. What's Mrs. White like? Is she hot? Yes. A tall guy and a beautiful dame, both of them Americans. They are definitely a couple. Slept in the same bed, bathed in the same tub. How long have they been at the hotel? They've only been in the hotel for three days. Since they never leave their room, it does not take much to figure out what they are up to in there. No, they have never set foot here before. Have the Whites had any visitors since their arrival? Solitary types. If you ask me, they are not tourists. They hardly ever came out of their hole. They put everything on the hotel bill. Meals, clothes, alcohol. The room has been booked for a good month. The man went out a couple of times at night. Will you give me their room number? I'm gonna pay them a little visit. Room 507. But you are out of luck. They are not there. Must have kissed and made up. The dame has dyed her hair red. Look, I've got other things to do, you know. It's not like your money is going to a life of leisure. You want to hire a private eye.
entered the Alpine. Birds have returned. Even so, I would like to take a quick look. Room 507. Just a quick look. That's when I saw the most amazing thing in my life. I do not know if it was the smoke that blurred my vision, but one thing is for sure. That creature was not trying to keep them warm. And the damn creature saw me! I have fought in the war, you know, but I have never seen the likes of that. And his eyes stared at me. I ran. Yes, I fled like a little kid. There must have been something in the air because... I fainted right after that. I came around later, near the Alambic. That's where you saw me. Mom? Is that you? Ah, no. Jacques Alouin, I'm arresting you for the double murder of the Whites. Believe me, I'm not the culprit. Speak to my mother, she'll give you the proof. Well, thank you for your help. What? Yes, I had you followed, and you led us straight to the culprit. No. Something is off. I've been tricked like a sucker. But by who?